Are you a man looking for an intensive program to help you overcome sexually addictive behaviors? Gateway to Freedom is your answer. Gateway to Freedom is a three-day workshop for men seeking to overcome any destructive sexual habits. Whether married, single, or divorced, Gateway to Freedom will help men regain hope for a new life of purity and real contentment. The workshop is conducted by experts in the field of sexual addiction recovery with decades of combined experience. Read testimonials of workshop alumni at gatewaymen.com. Get all the info and register online at gatewaymen.com or call 1-800-49-PURITY. Hi, my name is Jonathan, and I'm the founder of the Gateway to Freedom Workshop. I want to personally invite you to be part of our next workshop coming up June 24th through the 26th in Texas. So call us today at 210-822-8201 or visit gatewaymen.com. Welcome to Pure Sex Radio, training men, educating women. Are you ready to get real and start living each day in purity? This dynamic program is designed to educate, encourage, and equip listeners with the tools necessary for living a life of sexual purity. Pure Sex Radio brings you the best in mobile talk radio. Listen to real life struggles, learn how to overcome lust, pornography, and sex addiction, and get serious about purity. Your hosts for Pure Sex Radio are Jonathan Doherty and Stephen Cervantes. Jonathan is the director of Be Broken Ministries and founder of the Gateway to Freedom Workshop for Men. Stephen is the founder of the Hope Counseling Center. Visit us online at puresexradio.com. And now, please welcome Jonathan and Stephen on Pure Sex Radio. Good day, radio listeners. Welcome to this week's edition of the Pure Sex Radio broadcast. We're glad to have you here with us. My name is Jonathan. I'm here with Stephen. And uh, Stephen, other than the the oak allergies that you're having, how are you doing today? You know, it's a great day to be alive, and I have joy in my heart. And if my nose and nasal passageway would clean up and clear up, <clears throat> I would have clarity. There you go. So. Well, I want I want the listeners to know that uh, Stephen looks way better than he sounds today. <laughs> so uh, anyway, well, we're excited, uh, listeners, to, to have you with us. And uh, I'm excited about this broadcast because periodically what we like to do is um, there are men who come to our Gateway to Freedom three-day workshop and they're so gracious to us because they they gain these insights along the way, and and then um, you know Stephen will ask them, would you be willing to allow us to share some of those insights on this radio program? And of course, we we never use names, we never do anything that's going to identify the uh, you know these guys, but. Uh, they're always so gracious because they say, yeah, absolutely. If this can help somebody else, that'd be great. And so this week we are going to dive into a whole bunch of, of insights that these men have gained. And, and hopefully it will be beneficial to you, our listeners, um, as you continue to journey on in your pursuit of integrity. So, Stephen, why don't you <clears throat> launch in yeah. number one. So the first comment that one of the Gateway men said was, it really doesn't matter what I say now. It matters what I do. Now, it's funny because I think they heard that from you at the workshop. I think you say some version of this, and uh, and then you make an application to wives also. Yeah, because when, when I talk to the guys and we're talking especially about for any guys who are married and we need to talk about this issue of, how, you know, how do you re- rebuild trust and some of those kind of things, I often will uh, will give the example of or the, the illustration, let's say that your wife calls my wife and, you know, asks her, what's the most important thing that I should know for when my husband comes home on, on Sunday? And I say that my wife would say to your wife, don't believe a word he says. And, you know, of course, guys, you know, the eyes get big and they're like, oh, my goodness, that's terrible, you know. But um, the, the idea is don't believe a word he says, only trust his actions over time. And so... Because the reality is, is if a guy has been pursuing his addiction, he's been pursuing 
uh, you know, sexual acting out. And certainly he's been doing these things and keeping them from his wife and, and telling, uh, you know, keeping secrets. Then in order for him to keep those things hidden, he has used words to lie to his wife. And so the idea here is you have got to expect if you're a man out there and all of the spit has hit the fan and all of your secrets are out there, you just you have got to expect that your wife will not and should not believe any word you say that comes out of your mouth. Therefore, your focus needs to be on actions. What am I doing yes. that demonstrates true change? And then over time, you might gain the right again for your words to be trusted. But for now, guys, just expect <laughs> you're not going to be believed for whatever you say. And and honestly, I think it, it can um, reduce a lot of stress for you because if you say something to your wife and she fires back and say, I don't believe that at all, instead of you getting mad, if you have the expectation that, well, she shouldn't believe anything I say right now. Yes. You can say, well, I expect that. And put the pressure on yourself, right, exactly. to make the change. So comment number two is, I realize I have to go home and be more accountable for my time. Um, I, I need to let my wife know where I am and what I'm doing. I need to text her frequently. And even though it's a pain sometimes and I'm not very good at it, my job is to let her know I'm safe and I'm keeping her safe. And you know what I would say? Uh, because if you're a single guy out there and you just checked out because Stephen said this guy needs to check in with his wife or whatever, this comment and this insight applies to you as a single man too. Um, don't think that because you don't have a wife that you shouldn't be accountable for your time. You need to get a band of brothers. You need to get a couple of guys that you start doing the very same thing that this guy is doing with his wife. This guy's saying, hey, I'm texting because I'm here. I'm, I'm going to be at this place. I've got this meeting. You need some guys that you can do that with if you're single because the, pr- the, the principle here is of accountability and saying I need to be accountable for my time because when I have been unaccountable for my time, guess what? I've gotten myself in serious trouble because I don't have any, I don't have any sense of allowing someone else into my management of time. And when that happens and we start thinking that we can do whatever we want with our time, it becomes a dangerous, kind of a dangerous combination. So one of the men said, I have to go home and rebuild my marriage. And I think about that. Rebuild, because it's probably been trashed maybe, mm-hmm. it's or it's limping if half of you is outside the relationship and you know, trust is shattered. I have to go rebuild. But but why? Yeah. Why is this important? Because the skills you need in life are learned and practiced in your relationship. You, you could go home and not have a relationship. But if you don't work on growth, emotional growth, relationship growth, if you don't practice praying with your wife and spiritual growth, if you don't practice growing, you're going to be stunted. Yeah, and I'm glad you I'm glad you framed it up that way because rebuilding your marriage is a boy, that's such a broad turn you know, it's such a broad statement. Like of course any guy could say, Yeah, I need to go home and rebuild my marriage. But but putting it in the relational growth context, it because some guys could say, I need to rebuild my marriage and that, that might mean to them, Hey, I just need to I need to patch things up so that we don't get a divorce. Right. You know? No. And this is saying, no, no, I, there's a rebuild. I like that because it's saying it, we need to realize that the old foundation has been broken up and it's been, in some ways, it needs to be removed in order that a new foundation can be built on better communication skills, um, understanding what it is to give selflessly, um, learning how to uh, love as Christ loved the church, those types of things. And, mm-hmm. and, and, really focus on the relational aspect, which, uh, quite honestly, I mean, I think you and I would agree, is the much harder work than simply trying to prevent divorce. I mean, it's much harder work. I mean, a guy... To really grow a great relationship yeah. than just to do enough to prevent... Exactly. Oh, I see. Because I've seen, I mean, we've seen guys before that have done the absolute minimum to make it appear 
that mm-hmm. growth is happening in order that their wife doesn't file for divorce. And we're saying, and this guy is saying, no, I'm much deeper insight here that's saying I need, there's a whole new relationship that I need to build with my wife. And you do have to do individual work. Sure. And you have to do relationship. You have to do both. Mm -hmm. The next gentleman said, you know what I find very helpful? I have a memory verse that I'm working on. And I get up in the morning, I say my verse. Um, And it sort of frames me in a positive way in relationship to God, I'm going to think something all day. Why don't I pick what I'm going to think and meditate on? Mm. And so I thought that was really a good insight. And I would even, uh, I mean, in, in for the sake of making a shameless self-promotion plug here, uh, I, I would encourage folks to actually sign up for the 40-day e-course because that's a great little tool. It's free. Uh, so maybe it's not that shameless of a plug because, I mean, we're not making anything off of that. <laughs> it's free, but the 40-day e-course, it's a, it's a 40-day devotional that comes to you by email every day. And in that, there is always a scripture verse or a scripture passage. Mm. That's, and that, that might be something that— I think he, that's what he was referring to. Awesome, he was yeah. using his verse— and I want to share with you, too, one of the, one of the things that we uh, encourage people to do in that 40-day e-course is to get out some 3 by 5 index cards and then actually write down the verses in order to have them handy for, for, for memorizing or for to just meditate on. And, Stephen, I don't know if I told you this, but we had a, a guy one time uh, in a foreign country who had actually gone through the e-course. He'd taken all of his index cards he had pinned them up on his wall, and then he sent us a picture of that. And it was just cool to see all oh, those verses. That's great. But this is a great insight because it's saying, I wanna, I'm, I'm retraining not only my schedule in the day because I'm saying I'm going to do something different than I've done before, mm-hmm. but I'm retraining my mind, and I'm, I'm allowing myself to dwell throughout the day on this, on this truth that I want it to seep into my mind and into my heart so that I see the world differently today than when I'm simply just living in my self-centered paradigm. That's good. Next comment. Every morning I hold my wife and I pray for her for 10 minutes. Isn't that a great thought? Wow. I just lay there. I hold her. You know, I speak blessings and truth over her. I pray. I lift her up to the Father. Ask God to bless her and bless me. You know, I receive, I give, union, oneness. Yeah, and I, th- I think it's a beautiful, a beautiful picture. Now, I do want to, you know, I'm sure there's going to be listeners out there that'll say, I wish mm. that I could do that. But where we are right now, I mean, there's no way my wife would allow me to do that. I, and, and I get that, and that's okay. But... I would still, if even if you're not in that place where your wife would allow you to be, you know, close enough physically for you to maybe do what this man is saying that he's doing, I would encourage you to engage the 10 minutes of prayer for your wife every day, whether it's in her hearing or not. Uh, and Because I think there is just something, because the first thing that I thought, Stephen, when I, when I heard you say that statement mm-hmm. was... What a great way for a man to get outside of himself for the sake of his wife. Because mm-hmm. think about it. If you're spending 10 minutes and you're, you're focusing on praying for your wife, are you able to really be having self-centered, selfish thoughts and desires? No, it's like you're getting outside of yourself. You're thinking about her and you're putting her first and you're... You're making your prayer about her, and what what can I do to serve her? And ten minutes is a long it time. Is. <laughs> One minute is a long time for a guy to come up with things to say. So let's and just do, be prayerful and building, and you know. So let's do growing. that. If 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 you're out there and you go ten minutes, man, that's two. Try two minutes. You know. So just mm-hmm. start with two minutes a day, whether or not you're holding your wife, whether or not. She's in your hearing. Just start that practice of Yeah, and you know her. what's interesting? <clears throat> I, I want to build on what you're saying because maybe she's laying over there cold and hurt and wounded and doesn't want any touching. Uh, you know, you could still pray out loud. First of all, it's hard for mm-hmm. people to do, but it's so powerful. If your wife lays there and listen to you cry out to God and lift her up 
and ask that the Father bless her and that you deem her lovely and worthy of love. And and you're just talking to God about you, about her, about the relationship. And she's listening. You know, mm-hmm. she's going to be blessed. But guys don't. They might be embarrassed. They want to talk out loud. They don't know what to say. You know, but it's it, get that prayer rhythm going. I think it's helpful. Mm-hmm. So the next guy said, I have to have a daily walk with God and I have to daily work on purity. And right now, I have to make my marriage secondary. Because if I don't get me right, and if I don't get this behavior right, I'm just taking in, you know, a bandage, bandaid, patched up, you know, to strapped together with duct tape man that's going to go build a marriage. And that's not a pretty picture. And I love, I love the order and the clarity that he is getting on on how a a healthy relationship is built. If you think of it like a house, what he's saying is, I can't work on the roof if the foundation isn't laid yet. I mean, it's a, it's a it's an impossibility. <laughs> you know, you can't you can't be trying to put the roof on a house where there's no foundation. Right. So what he's saying is I've got to get the foundation right, which means I've got to get me right. I've got to get to a place where I'm walking in purity, that where I am walking with God. And when I, when I saw that, that phrase there, walk with God, um, I know we think of that in the spiritual sense, but the very first thought I had was take a walk. Like literally walk with God. I think sometimes taking a walk can help clear your head. Yes. It can. It can. For one thing, it's. I think it's good for your body, but it gets your. It gets you in motion in that idea of I'm. I'm literally going to go on a walk with God, praying during that time, um, and then also uh, asking God to help you in building that proper foundation for the house that you are building with your with your wife. That's good. You sound smart today, you know. I don't know. I, really? I mean, I don't have any oak allergies, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> I only sound smart. <laughs> oh, that's good. You have clarity over there. So one of the gentlemen said, God is helping me. As I walk towards God, things are falling off. Scales are falling off my eyes, and I can see he is helping me. And right now my wife doesn't want to try. She said, I'm tired. I don't want to do anything mm-hmm. to help you. But God is helping me. And my wife said to me one day, it's going to require a heart change for this ever to work. And God is starting to change my heart. Mm -hmm. And it's okay that she doesn't want to right now. And I love, you know, what's interesting to me is, you know, his wife doesn't want to try, but she wants him to have a heart change. And I'm thinking, isn't that interesting? (laughs) And and I'm not not Mm. saying... I find that refreshing. I find that hopeful because I get it. I totally get it that a wife would want to pull back, would want to say, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. We've gone around this merry-go-round so many times. I have been disappointed and hurt and betrayed and broken so many times. I don't have the energy right now to try. I'm tired right now. But there is still a spark in me that wants there to be a spark in you. <laughs> you know, there's still something in me there's that says, hope. I, I, yes, I want that something to happen in you, yes. but I can't be the one to be part of it right now, yeah. you know? And I love the fact that this guy is getting where his help really needs to come from. A That's lot of guys good. look to their wives, and their wives almost become like their, um, you know, their personal trainer or something the saying, I'm going to tell you when to go to group and I'm going to tell you what counselor to see and I'm going to dictate your every move. And, and they, they almost say, well, I got to look to my wife and please my wife and do it. And what this guy is learning is, you know what? It's God that's helping me. And if there is going to be any real change in my heart, it's not because my wife is wanting to try. It's not because our marriage is, is getting any better right now. It's because God cares about me. It's because God wants to help me in this brokenness. Mm. And so I love the fact that he's seeing where the real source of that change and that transformation comes from. That's good. So another gentleman made this statement, good things are fast, 
But great things take time. That should be a T-shirt, man. That is like, <laughs> it's got hashtags all over it. I mean, that is that is wonderful. Jonathan will be tweeting that out exactly. later or something, right? And, and unfortunately, since, you know, we don't uh, share these guys' identity, he won't get any credit for it. So I... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to take all the credit. But I love that. I mean, when I first read that, I thought that is so profound and so insightful. And and what I like about it is he's saying, I'm recognizing that I don't want to settle for good. Mm. I, I want great. And, and, and realizing that great. So when you think about it, great things. Okay. Great relationships take time. Yes. Great integrity takes time. Great patience takes time. I mean, patience itself takes time, you know. Mm-hmm. So the idea of great things, and, and so I guess the question to the listener is then, what do you want great things? And are you willing then to put the time in, to yeah. allow for the time? And what I think is also implied in here is that great things don't just take time but that great things are built over time. So it's not like, hey, just let time pass. That's right. And just the passing of time will produce great things. It's saying to work on great things and to essentially accomplish great things takes a long time. Well, and I think about fast food. I don't know. I'm sort of simple. It's getting close to lunchtime. It's like, I can go get something good. It tastes good. It's melty, cheesy, greasy. It's good and fast. But great food is not found at fast food places. No, it's you know? not. Yeah. It's slow cooked and it's layered and it's developed and it's rested and then it's worked again and maybe it's baked twice. Oh, gosh. But it's great and I'm getting hungry. <laughs> so next one. You know, I want you to talk about this because I love this statement. I don't have to carry all of this alone. Mm-hmm. I want you to personally say something because I want to personally say something about this. It's like if if I didn't have brothers helping me, even this program forces me to get ideas to think about. When we go to our weekend, other men are pushing and challenging us, you know, and, and calling us forward. And it's like the saints that have gone before – we're in community, the people around us. You work in this ministry here, and you got people around you. And it's just, you know, relationships and are powerful and helpful. And unhealthy people don't know that, and they mm-hmm. can't find relationships. But it has been personally help. Life has been helpful and easier on me because I try not to go alone. So carrying it alone, he said, is heavy, and I don't have to carry it alone. What would you say about well, the, life and the, heavy? The first thing that pops into my mind, and it was, it was, it's something that's very um, refreshing for me to to reminisce about and to to think about, is you know the first part of Galatians chapter six tells us to that we're to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. It's almost like saying, "Listen, if you want to boil down, mm. you know, everything that Christ taught about, it boils down to as brothers and sisters bear each other's burdens." And and you know, so many times we have been duped in our society to think that. A real strong man is a man that carries it all alone. And it's like, that is such baloney. I mean, I promise you the strongest men of character that I know are men who have deep friendships in their life, men who have other men who are willing to call them to account when they're drifting off course. And so I think there's a great, um, there is so much greater strength in that bearing of each other's burdens than there could ever be in me trying to do all this stuff on my own. I mean, I've proven I can't do it on my own. And so I I love this idea of brotherhood, of, of connection, of, of actually saying, Hey, you know what? You, you pick up that side of the log and I'll pick up this side and we'll, we'll carry it down the road. Mm. You know, because I love what he's saying here is he's saying, I like how he puts it. He says, I don't have to carry all this alone. He isn't saying, I don't have to carry anything. He's saying, but I don't have to carry it all by myself. 
it's it's too heavy, but I can get guys that will help me along the way. I've got my part that I need to carry. Yeah, I know that. I've got responsibilities I've got. Mm-hmm. But I've also got friendships and brothers that can help me along the way. Good. So one guy said, I am digging in deeper and deeper into my own private study time, my quiet time, some emotional time, spiritual time. I, I've i been a lightweight and I have to get deeper in maturity, in insight, in vision, in behavior. I'm digging in deeper. Mm-hmm. Well, this is all about growth, isn't it? I mean, yes. and and to grow, uh, I do believe that we we need two um, really pri- primary environments in order to grow. One is I absolutely think we need community. You know, we need the sharpening that comes from you know, rubbing up against people that are going to challenge us and that are going to question our ideas and that are going to push us. And and we need that. We also need, I believe, solitude. We need to be able to take these private times and say, I want to dig deep. I mean, it even says that Jesus often withdrew to lonely places to pray. So so I think we need both of those contexts. What this guy is saying is, I'm learning how to grow in that solitude. I'm learning how to grow deeper in that time, my private time with God and with myself. Yes. Uh, This statement was made, I'm giving the story of my parents back to them. And you have to kind of unpack that because probably he was talking about the wounding, the loneliness, the the unworthiness. I'm giving the story of my childhood and how painful it was back to those that were part of contributing to it because I want to unburden myself. I want to be free. And I have to give that identity back to receive a new identity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's similar to a broadcast we did recently in terms of talking about exchanging the the old map and the old identity that our dad may have given to us in in exchange for the new identity that that Christ gives us. Mm -hmm. And and so I think also it's just being able to recognize what am I what am I actually owning? And and the things that I don't need to own, I need to give them back to their owners. Right. That weren't for me and I picked them up. Yes, good. Yes, a comment was made. I was discouraged when Jonathan said, it may take five years for your wife to heal. Yeah, well, that's because I was sharing my story, and I usually try to let people, <laughs> let, let people know this is my story. I'm not saying that that's the time frame. that it, it That's the time frame it really took, I think, for my wife to get to a place where there was real trust rebuilt, and that, you know, so... and. And, and I, I get that it would be discouraging, but that's because so many times we don't want to think in the long term. But remember, good things are fast. Great things take time. Mm. I'm going to skip around here a little bit. Porn stole from me and my wife. Mm. I realize now the porn was taking from me, from my wife, from my children. Porn didn't give me. Porn stole Yes, listeners, please do not believe the lie that is out there that says pornography will enhance the intimacy in your marriage. It's exactly the opposite. There is no way that you can deepen intimacy with your spouse by inviting other people into that intimacy, whether in reality or whether through pornography. So it is just a false notion that porn can bring more to your relationship. It will take away from your relationship. So no more secrets or hiding. I thought even after after I was busted and caught, I thought I would just need to keep hiding and hiding better. No more hiding. No more secrets. And that's exactly um, where we're going to land the plane today because I think, you know, whatever wherever you're going, wherever you've been in your life and, and where you are right now, the, the way to move forward is to move forward in the light. And so if you're carrying any secrets, if you are struggling with something right now, please reach out to us. We want to help you be able to unpack that and learn what it means to then live in the light. We hope that these insights that these men have shared have been helpful to you. And if there's anything that we can do to move you forward in your journey, please contact us. Uh, we would love to uh, talk with you. Thank you, brothers, for giving us permission and being part of this program. Every gateway man out there is part of this program. Mm-hmm. We stand on your shoulders, and we fellowship under the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Well, folks, we look forward to having you back here again next week on the Pure Sex Radio Broadcast. Mm-hmm.
Pure Sex Radio is paid for by Be Broken Ministries. Visit us online at puresexradio.com. We'll be right back. 